welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about changing dimensions of a rectangular prism. So let's go ahead and get started with that by taking a look at some important information. So looking at the important information here, we have two key ideas. So the first one is that if we multiply one dimension by a scale factor, the volume will change by the same scale factor. So when we're talking about rectangular prisms, if I were to multiply one of the th dimensions by the scale factor, the volume will change by the same scale factor. The second piece there is the surface area will change, but not by the same scale factor. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in practice with example A. Here we are at example A and it says, if the width of this rectangular prism is tripled, complete the information about the new box. So we can see that they've tripled the width here. So we've gone from four inches to 12, four times three is 12. And if I were to find the volume of my first prism, I would do nine times four times five because volume is length times width times height. If I do that, I get 180 inches. So now knowing that I've tripled one of the measurements, which is four, I can see what I'm going to find my volume to be. So all I need to do is do 180 times three, because if I tripled one measurement from four to 12, I can triple the volume from 180 to 540. Sure, we could find the volume and make sure that that works. And if we do that, we can nine times 12 times five does give us 540 inches. But we can see that the shortcut there is since we moved one of the measurements up triple that the volume also tripled. Now let's take a look at the next example. Here we are at example B and it says, which prisms have a volume that is exactly double the original prism. Now we could do this one of two ways. We could find the volume of the original prism and then find the volume of the other four prisms and then compare them, see which one is double. But there's a much faster way that we know since we know that if one of the measurements is doubled, then we know the volume is doubled. So that's all we need to look for. So if we're looking at the first one, we've got two, we've got one, those are the same as the original. And then we've got eight, Eight is double four, and since I've only doubled one measurement and one measurement only, I know that the volume here will also be double. If I'm looking at the blue one down there at the bottom, two is the same, four is the same, three is not double one, it's triple, right? One times three would give us three, so this is not going to give us a volume that is double. Now let's take a look at the purple box. We've got four, okay, that's double. One, that's the same, four is exactly the same, so then this prism will also work since we only have one double. Now looking at the yellow box, we've got two that is the same, one is the same, and 12, which is going to be three times. So again, that's not going to work. So we have two prisms there that have the exact volume that is double. Now let's take a look at the next example. Here we are at example C and it says only one of the dimensions between box A and B box B are different fill in the missing dimension. So they've given us the length that is gonna be the same, six and six, the height that's gonna be the same, one and one, and we need to figure out the width. And we know the original width is gonna be two, and we need to know what the missing width is going to be. But luckily for us, they've given us some important information. They've told us the volume. So they know the volume is 12 on one, and the volume is 60 on the other. So good news there, because all we need to do is figure out how much or what scale factor we use to get from 12 to 60. So in order to figure that out, we're gonna divide 60 by 12. 60 divided by 12 is five, so we know we've gone up by a scale factor of five. So all we need to do is multiply two times five, and that's going to give us 10, so our width is 10 centimeters. Now let's take a look at our final example. So here's our final example and it says, if the width of the rectangular prism is tripled, complete the new information about, or the information about the new box. And here we're gonna be talking about surface area. So we've got an original box, we've got our new box, and instead of finding volume this time, we're gonna talk about finding surface area. We can see that we've tripled the width just like we did over in example A, where we've got four is now 12, so we've tripled that. So we're gonna start by finding our surface area. So that's two times length times width, plus two times length times height, plus two times width times height. We type that straight into our decimals calculator and we should get that our answer is going to be 202 inches squared because we're talking about surface area, not talking about volume. So now we need to figure out what the surface area is of our new box. Now, like we talked about in the beginning, we can't just triple the surface area. If we were to do that, we would end up getting 202 times three equals 606. But if I find the actual surface area of the new box, that turns out to be 426 inches squared. So if we were to do nine times 12 times two plus two times nine times five, et cetera, et cetera, completing out the equation or completing out our formula there, we would see the surface area does go up 
from 202 to 426. So it does go up, but it's not by triple. So it's very important that when we change one of the measurements, it affects the volume equally. So if we were to triple it, then the volume would triple. The surface area will go up, but not by triple. That brings us to the end of this set of notes and the end of this video. If you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you like this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one.